Hi folks, welcome back to uh, Physics with Captain Rod. I'm making this video to be a, a very introductory video in analyzing circuits uh, involving AC power sources. So <clears throat> what we're going to do, we're basically going to discuss um, the current and cost to run this light bulb here, which I'm going to imagine here is 60 watts. That's a pretty common uh, bulb wattage. And we're going to be running it off of an AC power source. That's kind of that's what I mean by this picture here. So um, let's talk about the outlet here. So a little reminder about the outlets that you see in your house, right? And I'm assuming, uh, you know, for anybody watching this video, I'm going to talk about in the United States here. So the power grid in the USA, right, is a 170 volt power grid or voltage source that's sinusoidal. Right, and it gets as high as 170 volts, right, and then minus 170 on the bottom of the curve. And it has a frequency of 60 hertz. And what that means is on this picture that I just drew, this time frame from here to here is 1 60th of a second. That's the time per waveform. Now let's talk about like the plus and minus on the voltage. So in this picture, this terminal right there, that little guy, that's the one that's considered live, if you will, and that's the one that's carrying this, this voltage. And the plus and minus only has to do with directions. Basically, half the time, the voltage is pushing current at you, if you will, and half the time away. So you can think of it like a push-pull type of situation. It doesn't really matter which one you consider plus or minus. That's completely meaningless in these questions. The big thing is that half the time the current uh, is in one direction, half the time it's in another. Now, the 170 volts, a lot of people have not even heard of that and are probably going, what the heck, our power grid is 120. Well, the 170 is the peak voltage. And when you're calculating anything, you always use what's called the RMS voltage, which stands for root mean square. And the RMS voltage you get by taking the peak or the max voltage, let me put this in general here, and dividing by square root of two. Now, where this comes from is not important for the video. What's important for this video is that this value right here is approximately 120 volts. Let me just see what I get when I run it here. Um, pretty much right on 120 volts. So this is what's referred to as the RMS voltage. And this is what you want to use in calculations. Now, let's talk about the actual picture here. So I'm not going to include the lamp. The lamp really just is a device that holds the light bulb. And this cord, if you follow it far enough, right, and you kind of dissect it, eventually Right, there's two wires inside of this. And you can even see if you look at the picture, see how it's plugged into the right and left. And this one apparently doesn't have the ground hooked up, and that's perfectly fine for our example. And ultimately, one of those wires is connected to this outer surface, and another wire is connected to the uh, bottom of this thing. So the voltage waveform that we're talking about, we can think of that as being applied like here and here. So what I'm going to do now is draw a circuit diagram. And in the place of the resistor, or I'm sorry, the light bulb, we're going to put this resistor symbol. All right, and it's of some value that I don't know yet, but I'm sure we'll figure it out later in the problem. And then the voltage is an AC voltage. So this is the symbol for AC voltage, this circle with a little sine wave on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our RMS voltage, 120 volts. Now, we'll get to the actual problem here in a moment, but some things I'd like to discuss. Again, the voltage is going back and forth between plus and minus. And what that means in our picture is half the time the voltage has this polarity, and the other half, it has this polarity. So the current, half the time will be one direction, half the time it'll be in the other direction. I'm going to go ahead and just leave this double arrow picture here for my current. Oops, now why is this not? My pen just stopped writing here. Oh, there we go. Now, 
uh, another very important fundamental of circuits. This is a single loop circuit. What that means is if I were to measure current here, here, or here, you're going to get the same exact value. Okay, now, relevant equations, I guess, if you will. One, Ohm's law, right, which voltage is current times resistance. This is true for, for all circuits, AC or DC. And if we use the RMS voltage here, we would be calculating the RMS current, which is what we want. Now, right now, we don't know the uh, uh, resistance. What we do know, however, is the power of the bulb. So power can be written current times voltage. It can also be written as current squared times resistance. And either one of these will work here. I'm going to go ahead and do, oh, let's take this right here. Because the power of the bulb was given at 60 watts. And the voltage, the RMS voltage, is 120 volts. So our current here, our RMS current, is going to come out to be 0.5. If you take 60, divide by 120, right, watts per volt, and a watt per volt works out to an amp. Might be wondering, hmm, how does, you know, why is that? Well, remember, a watt is a joule per second, and a volt is a joule per coulomb. So if you work that out, that ends up being um, coulomb per second, which is an amp. So there's our RMS current. Now keep in mind that that current, you know, that's an average. It's the uh, root mean square current. All right, so now let's talk about this cost per hour to run this. So electrical cost in my area at the time of this video here, which is, you know, November of 21, uh, is around 16 cents per kilowatt hour. So this is basically just going to be a uh, uh, kind of a unit conversion here. This is a 60 watt bulb. Now in kilowatts, I'll work this out right here, that's going to be 0 0.06 kilowatt. Now you're not charged by the kilowatt, you're charged by the kilowatt hour. And if we take this and we multiply it by one hour, right? Now we have 0.06 kilowatt hours. So that's the, how much energy this bulb will use uh, in a one hour time frame. And now we're just gonna multiply that, oops, my pen, there we go, by our 16 cents per kilowatt hour. And again, you'll notice the kilowatt hours cancel. What do we get out of this, 0.06? I get 0.96 cents. You know, let's just put, say, approximately one cent, about one penny an hour to run that bulb. I always say, you know, electricity is just the most, you know, wonderful resource. When you actually look at, you know, you might pay a $120 electrical bill or something like that, but when you look at all of the things you get for that 120 bucks, the 120, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing that up in my life. You know, my electrical bills right now currently run between 120 and 150 bucks. But, you know, if I kind of write down, what am I getting for that? Well, 30 evenings lighting my house with many, many, you know, quite a few multiple bulbs and running television sets and stereos and refrigeration and hot water. Now, I've got gas water, but I need electrical to... Um, actually run the system that I have um, and it runs water pumps and plumbing so I'll just put bathroom here as my shorthand and you think about these things you know that we have every day for that you know roughly you know 120 150 a month is about four or five you know even 150 a month is about five bucks a day and when you consider all of these things for five dollars a day boy to me it just seems like a the deal of the century. But anyway, this is just meant to be kind of an introductory video on how to handle uh, AC circuits. I hope that that has helped. Have a great day.